Now that we have prepared our file, it's time to draw our walls. Go to the Walls toolset, click on the Wall tool, and then click on your Preferences. That's this button here. We want to make sure we're drawing the walls with the right overall thickness. We could draw any thickness that's suitable, but for this project, 4 inches. Then click on the Edit Wall Preferences button. We want to use class controls for everything. So everything is controlled by the class. Now you may not understand why we're doing this at the moment, but if you go back to your viewports, you might remember that we can override the graphic style of classes in viewports. So choosing the class style for these walls allows us later on to choose how the walls will be presented, what color, what line weight, what fill, and we can do that viewport by viewport. So that's kind of important. Click OK. Let's have a look at our insertion options. Now the insertion options, the height is going to be determined by the bounds. The top bound is our layer wall height. The bottom bound is our layer elevation. And the class for this wall could be anything we want. Now I've got some classes already in here. So let's create a new class and we'll learn how to control it. Wall dash external and we're going to edit the properties after creation so we're going to choose the graphic properties for this wall so user creation it's going to be a solid fill we could give it a light gray color if you wanted it's got a black line around it and it's going to have a reasonably thick line so that when we create this wall it will have some sort of graphic style to it we could assign a texture to our walls if we wanted to the left we could put a texture that might look like weatherboards or siding. In the center we could put the same or a different one and the right side we could put a different texture for the inside of the building. For this example I'm just going to choose a tile. Click OK. So that's created my class and it's created the settings on my class. Now we can click OK, and now we can start to draw our walls. We can draw it on the left control line, so if we go clockwise, that will be the outside of the building. The center control line, obviously the center of the wall. The right control line, if we draw clockwise, it'll be the inside of the building. And this is an ability to have a custom offset. I'm going to use the left mode. So let's start by clicking once. Our wall is 10 meters long, or 32 feet 10 inches. I'm in an imperial file, so I'll use imperial, 32 feet, 10 inches. Enter once, enter again. Now you might have noticed that my wall was horizontal when I did that. We're coming down now, 26 feet, 3 inches. Enter once, enter again. Touch the point where we started, so we can line up with that. Click, and then click once back where we started. And that's created our walls. And because of the way we've set them up, it's automatically created those walls in 3D. And I've just used a keyboard shortcut, which is key 3 on my numeric keypad, to quickly jump to isometric. And key 0 is a top plan view. That's not the only way we could draw those walls. Another way we could draw them is to start. We're going to come along 10 meters. Enter once, enter again. Come down 8 meters. Enter once, enter again. Now if I make sure that my wall is horizontal along here, I can hit the K key. I call it K for close. And it finishes off your walls for you. And there's one more way that I'd like to show you, which is the rectangular mode. In the rectangular mode, you type in the distance, 32 feet, 10 inches, tab, minus 26 feet, 3 inches, enter once, enter again, and that's another really quick way to create your walls. We have some quick preferences. This is the area for my quick preferences here. And we have a utility menu where we can control what quick preferences are available. I'm going to choose auto join walls. That's this button here. And I want to turn auto join walls on. Currently it's off. Let's make sure it's activated. And then when I draw walls, you'll see that the adjacent walls that I touch highlight. They should highlight in red. Click. There it is highlights in red again and that's because I'm drawing in this 
rectangular mode. Let's go back to the polygon mode. So let's go click and click once. Find the midpoint, click and click once again. So that's a quick way to draw the internal walls. What about if I wanted to use my rectangular mode for drawing those? So let's find the midpoint, click, come down here and we could come across 6 feet 6 inches or 2 meters. So let's go 2 meters across that way, enter once and then click. And you'll notice that Vectorworks just draws the two walls it needs, it doesn't draw additional walls at the top and the bottom here. So that's a quick way to draw those walls. I'm just going to go back to my polygon mode because I'd like to keep showing you new tricks. So that's my wall. If we get our offset tool, we can offset to a distance. We can duplicate an offset. And here we can tell Vectorworks how we're going to offset. And we want to offset from nearest edge. So we can actually give it a distance across the gap that we want. Six feet, six inches, or two meters if you prefer. OK, click, and it creates the wall. But it doesn't join those walls together. You might notice there's a joint not quite right down here. It's because that last wall that we copied is not joined. Now in the trick that I showed you with the rectangular mode, it did join those walls together for you. But let's look at wall joining. We can T-joint walls. So I can join that wall to that one, creates a T-joint. Or I can use a corner joint or an L-join. may not be what you want so let's go back to our t-joint join that wall to there then join that wall to there back to a corner joint join that wall to there and the t-joint join that wall to there and when you're joining your corner walls together this might be quite important whether they're capped or uncapped so let's cap those I'm going to join that wall to there and then join that wall to there and you can see there's quite a difference and if they're uncapped, click, click, they join with a mitered corner.